Hey, my name is Samuel. Thank you so much for checking this video out. I'm going to give you, in this video, the overview of what makes a good property investment. So if you're a property investor already, you buy houses for a living, or if you're thinking of buying a house, you just got to watch this video. So these are the three things that make a great property investment. Please do smash that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. I really appreciate that. So first thing's this, if you're buying gold, silver, you're buying stocks and shares or dividends in a company, you can't buy them below market value. You, you can't buy Bitcoin below market value. You can't negotiate to buy Bitcoin cheaper. The price is the price. Whereas the thing I love about property is you can. You can negotiate to buy it cheaper than what it is. Before I tell you what makes a good property investment, let me tell you what makes a bad one, what not to buy. Most people that lose money, they buy off plan. So they'll buy a house before it's been built. Often you're gonna get burned doing that. Also they buy offshore. So they'll buy a house in a exotic area and they're excited and they're buying it with their feelings as opposed to their formulas. Off plan, offshore often lead to no money for you and disappointment. So be careful of those things. Not saying you can never make money, just be careful. This is what you should not buy. Do not buy a house as an investment because you like the house. Because you think, hmm, I could live in there one day. If it all hits the fan, at least I got this as a backup plan. Like, don't buy a house for that reason. Don't buy a house because you think that you could maybe have holidays there. Terrible plan. Terrible, terrible plan. Best way to lose money is to buy a house as an investment and think, I'll go there for my holidays. It's just stupid. You're just gonna lose money, seriously. It becomes a liability, not an asset. Don't, don't even try and kill two birds, ever. Don't buy a house and think, well, it's near my son's university. Like, it doesn't matter. What's a good investment? A good investment is a property that makes you money. That's it. If it makes you money, it's an asset. It's a good investment. If it doesn't make you money, if it loses you money, no matter how pretty it is, no matter how many, no matter how, how many pictures you can take outside of it, don't try and do it for any other reason than to make money. Don't buy a house to try and help people. Buy a house to make money, and then with that money, you can then help people. So what, what should you do then? Number one is buy it below market value. Discounted houses. One of the reasons I love property so much is because you can buy them discounted. When you know what you're doing, and you know how to negotiate, and you know what to look for, you can buy a house 20, 30% below market value. And it, it, you cannot do that with Bitcoin. You cannot do that with gold and silver. You cannot do that with stocks and shares. You just buy it at the price. Whereas in property, you make money when you buy as long as you know to buy below market value. Next, buy for cash flow. Don't be obsessed with anything else apart from cash flow. So you wanna buy below market value and you wanna be getting positive cash flow in your bank every month. So here's how to work out whether you're gonna be making cash flow or not. When you buy a house, work out what the expenses will be. The mortgage payments, the utilities, if, if it's a HMO, the insurance, what are all the, the management costs, what are all the expenses then look at what the rent will be. Then minus the expenses off of the rent and you should be left with a nice healthy profit at the end of the day. So a minimum of 200 pounds a month. I mean, honestly, even if it's a 50 grand house, really cheap house where you only put down 10 grand, 200 pound a month, minimum, you know, so really, typically you wanna be making 500 pounds plus on a house. Of course, it depends how much you put down, that's how you work out the return on investment. People talk about yields all the time. The yield, it doesn't matter what the yield is. What matters is, what are you putting down and what are you getting back? And then you divide those two together to work out the return on investment. What's my monthly profit times that by 12, my annual profit, divide that by my total investment. Not the total purchase price. How much did you personally put down? Divide them together, return on investment. I wanna be seeing a minimum of 15% return on investment. 20% and above and you're doing really well. So make sure you buy it below market value. Make sure that it's cash flow positive. And then thirdly is you wanna buy, and this is almost like a cherry on the cake. Okay, don't let the, don't let the tail wag the dog, but this is a big bonus. Is you wanna buy in an area whereby you suspect that that house is about to go up in value. 
and that's called capital appreciation. And how do you predict capital appreciation? Well, there's, there's pa it's quite complicated. There's patterns you can look at in, in, in the market and in the economy. Um, I would suggest that you come and join me at the Property Investors Crash Course. I'm gonna leave a link below with tickets and, and you can come for free, okay? Free Property Investors Crash Course, two days to learn all about this stuff. But a, a, a little thing I'll say is, if the, if the pr property area is bottomed out, when it drops, it will always follow an expansion. What most people think is, oh my gosh, it's dropped. Uh, it's gonna drop more. No, 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 no. After a recession will come an expansion, and after an expansion will come a recession. So you wanna buy when houses are, are, are low, when properties are bottomed out. You wanna buy below market value. You wanna buy for cash flow. And that, that makes a good investment. And then what do you do when the house goes up in value? Do you sell it? No, you never sell. You only sell a house if the house stops making you money. But it, it, until then, don't sell it. If it goes up in value, what you do is you refinance it. So if you bought a house for 100 grand and now it's worth 150, that 50,000 pounds, if you sell it, that's your profit and you pay tax on profit. So your 50,000 pounds is gonna drop. Whereas if you refinance it and you pull that 50,000 pounds out, i.e. you borrow against it, technically, that's debt that you can then reinvest into properties, by the way, guess how much tax you pay on that? None, nothing. So what, what, why would you sell it? You just refinance it and it goes up again, you refinance it. And with that, when you refinance it with that money, you're gonna buy another house. You're gonna buy another house. Snowballs, success breeds success. With the cash flow that you're making, you're gonna, you're gonna reinvest that into buying more houses. And until you're at a position whereby you're financially free, you shouldn't be buying stupid stuff. So first things first, don't worry about being debt free, become financially free, buy good property investments. And uh, that's, that's, that's the summary. So to learn more, come on the Property Investors Crash Course. I hope that was helpful. Please do comment your thoughts below in the comments and uh, let me know. Let me know below, in the, I wanna know, let me know. Are you more excited about capital appreciation or are you more excited about cash flow? Cash flow, drop it in the comments. Capital appreciation, drop it in the comments. I'm really interested. Subscribe, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching.